All right, stand by. Welcome, everyone. My name is Shatar Superior Collier. We are here with the AI Toolbox Bootcamp, week number six. Number and six. we are live. Welcome, everyone. So we have many, many updates to share. But at first, I'm going to introduce the founder of the AI Toolbox Bootcamp, Maxi Collier. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shatar. <clears throat> so look, you guys, we are at week number six. This is our final live broadcast for this cohort. So anyone who has made it this far with us, either in the live sessions or the replay, we want to thank you because you have defied the statistics. They say that only 10% of the people who sign up for online classes finish, and finish them. So if you were with us here at week six and in module number six, big props to you. We appreciate you. And we have so much more to discuss today. You know, we uh, just to give a little background, I'm Maxi Collier, the founder of the AI Toolbox Bootcamp and super live streams. We're here with my wife, Shatar Safira Collier, the co-founder of AI Toolbox Bootcamp and the CEO of New Vista Studios. We are here with Janine Matthews as well, our assistant and our collaborator over here at New Vista Studios and Super Live Streams, as well as Jen, our assistant and our collaborator over here in many of our projects. So we want to thank Janine and Jen and Shatara, I want to thank you as well for these weeks of time and energy that you all have put in. The fact is, just in the six weeks that we've been doing this live training session, the world of AI tools has changed even further, has evolved even more. There were tasks that we taught at the beginning of this program that have been simplified tremendously. For example, mid-journey and creating images. You know, in the beginning, we showed you guys how to use Discord, how to go into mid-journey and to make images. We showed you how to go to OpenAI and to use ChatGPT. But nowadays, and just in these few weeks, you no longer have to go through some of those difficulties. Yes, we still use mid-journey. Yes, we use ChatGPT. But we also showed you how Canva now has AI tools that are built in that allow you to do a variety of image creation, text creation, image manipulation. In the past five weeks, we have shared dozens and dozens of tools in our AI Toolbox Bootcamp. And anyone who is in the training program, you can go back through these lessons. You can find all the links. You'll find the replays. You'll find time code that will allow you to jump around in the replays, transcription, and many other things as well. And even though this is the last week of our live sessions, we still want to encourage everyone to post your questions in the community, contact Shatara and I for support. Now, technically, we will be having one more office hour on Thursday. Is that accurate, dear? Okay, cool. So Thursday at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time, we will have another office hour. So if you need help with your project, if you have any questions or anything, show up then. Also, if you have not already scheduled your free consultation session, if you are a member of this community, you can go up to the AI Toolbox Bootcamp, I'm sorry, to techandmedia.io and click book a session at the top and you can schedule a 15 minute call with us. Now, this is just in the next week and a half, because once we wrap up this session, Shatara and I are going to take a little break and then we're going to come right back and we're going to go through the timeline and we're going to take all these weeks of content and all these videos and we're going to edit them up into a nice cohesive piece so that those who are going through the self-paced courses can roll right along. So if you need any additional support, you can email us support at techamedia.io. You can text us 240-507-5627. All right, so that is the latest. Let's see, we have news and updates. Okay, yeah, so we've added more material, more lessons and more activities. And yes, let's talk about our Las Vegas meetup which is just starting two weeks, you guys. In two weeks, we're going to have the National Association of Broadcasters Conference, but we're also going to have the AI Toolbox Bootcamp meetups. We're going to be meeting up on that Saturday before, that Sunday before, and that Monday as the event takes place. So if you're a member of the community, watch your email and we'll keep you up to date on the schedule. So this session today, we're going to wrap up with a few key important instructions we're going to do the first part of our program talking about AI for educators. In, in this, we'll show you tools, resources, and strategy for people who are involved in education, coaching, and training. Whether you're a parent that's teaching your child at home, whether you're an educator in the classroom, or if you're an administrator working with teachers and educators. We're also going in our second part, we're going to look, dive back. Now, we started at the beginning of the program talking about media making using AI tools, and we explored some additional tools, 
But now we're going to do a deep dive and we're going to show you guys some of specific tools you can use right now for your AI media projects. All right. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and begin with AI for educators. OK, so let's see here. So, dear, can you go ahead? Uh, actually, we'll just stick it. Stick here. OK, now, if you've been following along and you've joined ChatGPT a few weeks ago, Hopefully by now you've gotten a lot more experience in using the program. Now, one of the challenges for many people is it, it's very easy to see it just as a novelty, depending on how you talk and communicate. In general, what you get back from large language models like ChatGPT is really based upon the prompts and the information that you put in as we emphasize. So as we talk about AI for educators, one of the first things we'll explore is prompts. So for example, this website right here that you will find in the links there, aliciakeeler.com, she has a list of 100 prompts for teachers to ask ChatGPT. Again, a list of 100 prompts for teachers for ChatGPT. Now again, this is everything from creating lesson plans to creating courses and activities. And again, we're gonna show you other tools along the way that are gonna help simplify. But let's say for example, you're an educator and you've just begun to use ChatGPT and you need to create some learning lessons or activities or something. You may start off with a prompt, something like this. Without using work worksheets, provide five creative ways for students to do an interactive activity around the systems of equations. Now that last part around the systems of equations, you just fill in the blank with whatever course you're teaching. And when it the now, now let's break down this prompt a little bit too. It says at the beginning, without using worksheets. Now, this is what we call a negative prompt. This is when we tell the chat GPT or the mid journey or something to not give us something back based on what we say. So now we're eliminating some of the things that may be undesirable results. And then we say, Provide five creative ways for students to do an interactive activity around systems of equations. Any educator, you can copy and paste that prompt and just begin to explore with it. Here's another one, create a rubric that aligns with the learning objectives. Now, again, you take these generic prompts and you begin to tweak and customize them depending on your very specific application. And in this list down here, the AliciaKeeler.com link, you'll find that she's categorized them based upon your intentions. You know, So we'll go take a look at, look at another one. And again, this is just very simple prompts. Shortly, we're gonna show you some additional tools for creating original e-learning content and for distributing your e-learning content. So another prompt, can you suggest some interactive activities or games that I can use to teach, fill in the blank, to my students? This is one of the early ones that we use with my mother, Dr. Betty Burston, as she was, as we were introducing and onboarding her to ChatGPT. We asked ChatGPT, tell us some ways the students can use ChatGPT in her program. And she has been using, and again, my mom is 75, 76 years old almost. She is using ChatGPT right now. So you can too. All right, so again, this is just another sample prompt here. And can you suggest some interactive activities or games that I can use to teach? Now, as we get into some of these other tools and resources, you'll find that we often use ChatGPT in order to generate outlines, text assets, paragraphs, and simple materials. And then we use other tools to combine all those together. This text right here, a teacher's prompt guide to ChatGPT, is an ebook that you can download as well filled with super valuable information specifically relating to prompting and chat GPT. So again, if you are not using chat GPT on the open AI website, you can still use some of these prompts on Bing, in Canva, right? Or any of these numerous places that now allow us to do chat GPT interactions. But this, the links to these resources are provided in the class. Okay, now outside, of chat GPT that we use directly is a fast evolving environment where people are creating custom applications that tap into the chat GPT database and API. Kajabi is an e-learning platform that is popular with coaches and trainers. 
It is a great place for you to put your courses, to put your learning materials. If you're not using a, a LMS like Thinkific or any of the WordPress powered ones, Kajabi is a very good one specifically for coaches and trainers. But most importantly, they've introduced a new free tool called the AI Creators Hub. In this AI Creators Hubs is a set of tools that are chat GPT powered. However, they have been customized towards specific educational requirements. So for example, we can come here and we can click course outline and it's going to create, a, uh, let's see. Okay, we can click course outline, it's gonna create an outline, but my next slide is a sales letter. So we can click sales, email, copy, enter some information, and it's going to generate a sales letter for us. We enter other information, it's gonna generate a course outline for us. Now again, this is a free site. This is Kajabi. I'm not encouraging you necessarily to sign up for the platform. It's a great one. But what I am encouraging you to do is check out this AI Creators Hub. Each one of these um, initiatives. So basically what they're doing here is they're creating templates. Now, yes, we can use ChatGPT on our own to, set, to create outlines, to create lessons. But what they're doing here is making certain templates that bring all of these pieces together under one goal. If we were to do this exact same thing at ChatGPT in the, to create a course outline, we may run out of characters and have to copy and paste multiple pieces together. And it's not that bad when it's just like one little piece of a document. But let's say we're de developing lessons where there's 20 or 30 lessons. Now you're copying and pasting from ChatGPT back and forth. Services that have these sort of templates and interfaces, they are customizing the use cases so that people can get exactly what they want out of it. Now, there are other services that do the same thing. Knowledge, spelled N-O-L-E-J, it's another example that takes the outlining techniques that are utilized in the Kajabi service, but knowledge actually helps you create finished courses. So you enter some information, it'll generate an outline for you, and then it will help you expand that outline into a more substantive course. And then it will help you serve that course as well. Knowledge is another example of people taking specific use cases and applications and then customizing the models and the interface towards a certain goal. So it's another one that you'll have on the list for you to check out. This one, mini course generator, is very similar. Instead of full-size courses, though, it focuses on courses that we can create as lead magnets. A lead magnet is something that we give away or sell at a low cost in order to have someone enter their email address so that then we can begin to build our email list and, and do sales and marketing over email. <clears throat> this mini course generator makes it super simple for you to just start with a few ideas and it advances along and gives you additional, it turns little ideas into lessons and modules and into bigger pieces. Now, Within a lot of these things that we're showing you right now are text based. We want to show you how you can begin to start to do some multimedia assets for your content. Some of this is so very exciting. So this site, and again, keep in mind that the sites that we're showing you now, in many cases, are reflective of, of whole um, horizontal sections. So there's plenty of services like Kyber AI. You know, there's plenty of services like these ones we're showing, but we're we're showing you the ones that we've worked with. So what Kyber AI allows you to do is to do something very similar as uh, with ChatGPT is generate content. However, we can now enter words and ideas. We can enter prompts. We can upload a photo to Kyber and it will analyze the photo and it will help us begin to generate a video. So for in this instance, I wanted to generate a video of a high school's teacher standing at a video screen teaching AI to a classroom of students. Now, again, this is not just, that sounds like a mid-journey prompt. In fact, I could copy and paste this directly in mid-journey and I'd get a still image. However, here in Kyber, it, this process actually generates a video for us. And again, all of these tools are new. All of them in their earliest stages. Every demo and example that we show you is only going to get better. But this Kyber, um, I, we took that exact prompt and it created a video for us. So, dear, can you play that sample? Or, are you able to pull up that video there? For media creators? 
Okay. Um, do but but we don't have the Kyber output on here. Okay. All right. So so then let's go ahead and um. So I, we kind you guys we're kind of merging these topics, even though we've differentiated at the top and said you know AI for educators and AI for media makers. The educators need media. And the media makers need other things. So we're going to play this little clip from Amaya 100 talking about media making using AI. But then we're going to come back and pick up our discussion on how you can use this AI to create videos for your content in a wide variety of ways. Welcome to the AI Toolbox Bootcamp. Amaya 100 here with information on AI for professional media makers. For industry leaders seeking to create high quality content quickly and efficiently, AI can assist with taking production output to the next level. Here are some specific ways with which AI can assist professional media makers. 1. Automated editing. AI can be used to automate aspects of the editing process, such as color correction and audio mixing. 2. Content creation. AI can be used to swiftly generate new content, such as graphics and animations. 3. Predictive analytics, AI can be used to analyze data and provide insights. 4. Image and video recognition, AI can use computer vision to analyze images and videos. 5. Speech-to-text transcription, AI can be used to automatically transcribe speech-to-text. 6. Automated translation, AI can be used to translate text and speech into different languages. 7. Virtual reality, AI can be used to create virtual reality experiences. 8. Chatbots, AI-powered chatbots can be used to engage viewers. 9. Media advertising, AI can be used to create ad assets. 10. Personalization, AI can be used to personalize content for individual viewers. 11. Automatic closed captioning, AI can be used to generate closed captions. 12. Storytelling, AI can be used to create compelling stories based on real-world events. See our AI-assisted documentary The Life of Louis Latimer found at lewislatimer.com. AI is transforming the media-making industry. With key tools, AI can help professional media makers secure and maintain a competitive advantage. All right, thank you, Amaya100. Okay, cool, so yes, Kyber is an example of one of these media tools that we can use for e-learning content, for entertainment content as well. Now, this is an example, again, of the prompt that I put in there. I want to create a video of a high school teacher standing in a video screen, blah, blah, blah. This is the image. It, it showed me a variety of thumbnails based on that. Then I was able to pick the thumbnail and then it generated a video. Now, the techniques that it's using to generate this video are or a technique of generative AI where the AI is making thousands and thousands of images that kind of look alike in order to generate the motion. However, it's not perfect. You know, Dear, are we able to pull up that video? But, uh, oh, I can't, I, I need to be able to play it. I can't play it on here. Okay, all right, cool. All right, so look, we're going to have all these examples in the learning management system. I need you guys to kind of forgive us a little bit. This is our first production that Shatara and I are doing where we're on the road. Normally, we're in our studio. So today, we're out on the road. So our setup's a little bit different. So be patient with us. So outside of Kyber AI, I want to show you guys about another amazing tool called Pictory. Pictory. And Pictory is an AI tool that allows you to generate scripts and videos, still images, a um, multimedia comp. It's, it's bas basically it's a tool suite that allows you to generate content, but it does it some very unique ways. So for example, we can type in some words like we can for chat GPT, but it also has another technique where we can enter a URL for a website and it can go and pull information from that website and begin to match that information up to pictures and generate a rough video. And this is what it has done here. You know, so in this case, we ask it about AI for media makers. And okay, this is the one articles um, to videos. So basically, you enter a URL there. And like I said, it goes to that URL. It's going to search for words. And then the chat GPT is going to give it, help it come up with a context. 
It's also going to search for photos and, and things that you could use there as well. You're able to combine your words with template sizes so you get specific styles based on the templates. You can generate different videos, a different orientation as needed. So again, this is pictory.ai, a content generation tool that uses a variety of things from prompts to images to URLs in order to help us expeditiously create some of this content. Are there any questions there before I go on to the next thing? Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, so cool. So again, you guys, we're talking about some tools to help people create content in a learning environment. So let's say that you're a homeschool parent and you're teaching your child at home and you find some curriculum materials that has the perfect text, but you want to generate some images or some videos that are reflective of your own child using tools like Mid Journey, using tools like Kyber, Pictory. These you can customize your learning materials down to a T as you need for your unique use case for your child. Now, we've talked about making the e-learning content, but we also want to show you guys about a framework that is super powerful that not only lets us author e-learning content, but also helps us present it to the world. We touched briefly on this weeks ago at the start of the program, but it's called H5P, H5P, you visit h5p.org. And there you will find there is a software application that allows you to generate dozens and dozens of type of e-learning content. As we click through, you see we can do interactive videos. By that, we can take a video, take a transcription, and we can create touch points and hot spots within that video. So we can be playing the video, the viewer reaches a hotspot and the activity can pop up, a quiz, a reading lesson, and other things. That's just with one of these modules in H5P, the interactive video. We also have branching scenarios, which means that you can create very much real world simulations. In the scenario that they have here on the H5P website, you'll see it's a, about a counselor who goes to visit a community and she has to make certain decisions. Do I knock on this door? Do I say this? Do I do that? You can author that for free using this H5P format right here. Now, just to clarify, you see we have two URLs up here, h5p.org and h5p.com. The h5p.org is the self-hosted version of this, meaning you're gonna need a little technical ex expertise in order to implement this. They have plugins here for leading learning management systems like Moodle, Blackboard, WordPress powered systems as well. Let me just click through a couple more of the activities. And again, if you want to see the full list, you can go to h5p.org and you can see a whole list there. Now, let's say you're not technically oriented and you want to use the capabilities of this. You can go to h5p.com and pay a small monthly fee and access this full suite of authoring tools. And the way that it works is you build your content in here and then you are given an HTML code just like we get for video we're able to drop that HTML code in any website to deliver our H5P content. Oh, this was the demo of the uh, one of the scenario-based ones. Shatar and I use the H5P for our Lewis Latimer project. On the Lewis Latimer project, if you go to lewislatimer.com and click the button at the top that says games, you'll see a memory match game. We created that in H5P. And then, and this is an example of H5P and still installed on our WordPress site. So basically what we've done is set up a WordPress site on an Amazon AWS hosted server. We installed that H5P plugin, and now we have an interactive content server for all of our sites. Even in this course here on the Thinkific, you'll see crossword puzzles, you'll see some other activities that are all generated by this H5P. Now, how do we combine this? So we may generate our text over here in chat GPT or in Canva or whatever. We may generate our images just like we did for the Lewis Latimer. We made these images. First, we made this original image in Mid Journey, that image of Lewis Latimer there. Then we took that image into Canva and we animated it. We added the little swirling circles around it and we put the lower text third. Then we were able to take that image 
and use it in our H5P in order to author that. We're able to add sound effects, we're able to change the text and to get it to do exactly like we like. Now again, that WordPress, the WordPress may seem a little intimidating to someone, but, but it's very simple. You just go, if you're using WordPress now, you can actually go over to your plugin directories, type H5P and the plugin will come up. You click install and you can immediately begin experimenting with this. And what's great about using this in a WordPress environment is that then we're able to combine it with other tools as well. So for example, there are plugins for WordPress that allow us to use ChatGPT within WordPress, that allow us to use MidJourney within WordPress and create images. So we're able to combine these. If you look on our Lewis Latimer site, you'll see we have something called the sponsor wall. The sponsor wall allows us to list people who have contributed to our efforts for our project. This is built in H5P. And then at the very bottom, you'll see where it says reuse or embed. If we clicked reuse, we can get a download of this H5P content that any person who has H5P installed on their learning management system can import that exact same comment content and it's going to look exactly the same on their system. Now, let me repeat that again. Using H5P, you can author e-learning content that is completely portable between learning management systems. So now this is how we take all of our H5P, or, I mean, all of our images and our text and our sounds and whip them all up together in this little hibachi that we call H5P. And business-wise, in terms of business opportunities, for instructional designers, you can create original content in your own H5P server, and you could do one or two things for your clients. You could either provide them with the embed code that they can use on their own platforms or you emb embed it in the course, or you can set up H5P on their learning management system, download that file and install it on their local system. It's a super powerful act opportunity. H5P is very mature. It's been around a very long time but its greatest capabilities and potential are only now emerging as we're able to generate all of these AI assets so quickly. So again, this is an example of what it looks like when we download the H5P. This is what the, the embed code looks like. So we get that embed code, we click it and copy and paste it, come over here, embed it directly into our assembly site, which is what we're using to run our Lewis Latimer. And voila, we have a game right there. This game can still run on plenty of places, plenty of sites. So we are nearly at our half hour mark. If there's no questions right here, we're gonna get ready to take a break, but let me just review what we've talked about. We've talked about the idea of using these tools in order to create original content, original lessons, curriculum, activities, quizzes. This is taking the original text, taking original images and using tools like H5P or other learning, or for example, Articulate Storyline. H5P has capabilities that exceed in certain areas, commercial programs and commercial software like Articulate Storyline. We've used Articulate Storyline for more than 10 years to create e-learning content for people. It's amazing and we love it. However, H5P works in conjunction wonderfully with that. So we showed people how to generate curriculums, make content, whip it all together in an H5P and serve it to the public. This is just a little bit of the tip of the iceberg for the role that chat GPT, generative AI, and these tools play in education. We will continue this dialogue about the role of AI in education in our community and our discussion forums. Now, there's just one little bit of you know, we intentionally avoided a lot of the hype, the good hype and the negative hype, you know, about AI over these past few weeks. But this week in particular, there's been a letter circulating where hundreds of uh, authorities in AI and machine learning and things like that have signed this letter requesting that there be a pause to the development of open AI and other large language models. It got a lot of attention because they were talking, even the folks from OpenAI frequently expressed their concerns about the potential misuse of AI. 
We've talked, we've touched on a little bit of potential misuse in these past weeks, but let me give you an example of one that's in the news right now. One, there was an image of the Pope in a Bellagio puff jacket that went viral. And many people who didn't know about AI thought that that was a real situation. Now we'll drop this video, we'll drop that image in over the, the edited version of this, but you can Google Pope in puff jacket and you'll find that image. That has led, you know, it was debunked and, and there was another one. There's been several viral photos in recent weeks that have gone around, you know, that have made certain people who didn't know about AI question their authenticity. So if we were worried about misinformation in previous years, there is much we can be concerned about now because, yes, the AI will allow us to do artificial images, artificial videos, even clone our voice and other people's voices. There was a hip hop song by Jay-Z that was circulating recently, and he did not rap on that song. It was someone took his voice, cloned it turned it into an AI sample, and then they were able to type any words and it sounded like it came out in his voice. So let's think about that. Let's think about, you know, there was already these phishing and these scams and these hustles where people were pretending to be family members in need and they hustle someone for some money. Look at how easy it would be for someone to voice clone someone's voice and to create a message of distress and send it amongst unknowing family members. So this is why it's important for us to have these discussions about this AI, about its great potential uses. We've spent so much time talking about that, but there are clearly emerging unethical and misuses that are growing to the point where we're going to have to do a whole separate class on that. So with that in mind, we're going to get ready to take our break right here at our half hour mark. And when we return, we're going to come back and discuss AI for media makers more at length. And we're going to give you some demonstrations of some super amazing tools. All right. I'm Maxi Collier. This is the AI Toolbox Boot Camp, week number six. Thank you to everyone who's here with us.
All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the AI Toolbox Bootcamp. I'm Maxi Collier. This is week number six of our training program. In the past few weeks, we have taken you on a journey of introduction to artificial intelligence, machine learning, generative AI, using AI for education and business. And now we're talking more about AI for media makers. So as we have mentioned, these tools are evolving at such a tremendous rate right now. We told you last week about how Adobe has integrated AI across its suite of tools, just like Canva did. Microsoft integrated AI across the suite of tools. But there are still some specialty tools out here, some of which are most amazing. You know, in fact, we'll start off and I'll show you a clip. Now, here's what I'm going to show you. First, we're going to play a clip of me doing a punch. And then we're going to show you how using this tool right here, Runway ML, we were able to easily take that video as a source and then apply some styles to it and output it as a completely different video. And it's truly amazing. But let me go ahead and show you guys. So, dear, can you go ahead and play video number one? Damn! Damn! Okay. That's video number one. So I recorded that video very quickly, went over to runwayml.com and using their service called Gen1. So basically you quickly make your account here with Runway. You can log in with your Gmail. I came over here to the Runway site and you go to that little corner where it says Gen1. Gen1 is their new tool and actually, they already have Gen 2 that they, they have previewed. But what Gen 1 allows us to do is upload a video source and then either upload an image and have the image be used as a style reference. And so I uploaded the video and then I went over to Mid Journey and I said, let me make an image of an ancient samurai karateka. And I use some other style of declarative. Oh, thank you, dear. So this was the reference image that was generated by the uh, mid journey. So we took the original video. We took this reference image. And can you play the output there? And good. Can you play it again in case anybody missed it? So again, you guys, let me show you the little formula. We made a little slide here. That, okay, so that is the video uploaded into Mid Journey. And these are the styles. So, so after I made that initial image that we brought into the runway that we used as a style reference, they have another option to use text prompts to describe the style. So again, same video, but now I'm applying a different style to it by simply typing the words. And so the text prompts that I use were similar to what I use for the mid journey. I said, I want to apply a uh, ancient Japanese samurai punching with a fireball anime style. And this is what the runway ML gave us. Can you play it again? Thank you. Can you play the original clip again? Damn! Damn! In the second and third clip. And then one more in the last one. Now, again, we're playing it multiple times so you can see the strengths and the weakness of this process. As you see, the character changes his look and face multiple times because this ties into what we were saying before about the generative AI in some cases, we want things and styles that look completely different than anyone in the world. Other cases, we want to lock styles down to get a continuity across the image. That's one of the challenges right now with this Runway ML. You know, this output is about what you're going to get. But again, this is generation one. In their generation two, we don't need any reference video input. In that case, I can go directly to typing, create an anime video of a man doing a reverse punch on the right side, and it could generate an image like this. Science fiction, you guys. So this was the formula, basically. My source input plus our style image 
equaled that first output. And the same thing, source input plus a text prompt, an ancient Japanese samurai punching with a fireball on his fist resulted in the third one. Can we play it one more time? That one did. So that video source, this is the, uh, it's the other one for the fireball. Thank you. This one. So look how many times he changes faces. <laughs> However, when we first started using this runway uh, ML Gen 1 just a few weeks ago, we were only able to work with 30, I mean, with three seconds of video at a time. Now we're already able to work with five seconds and soon it will be more and soon we'll have greater control over the output for that continuity that we need. However, right where this is right now, it is evolved enough for us to do a trailer for a project that we've had in mind for a very, very long time, the protégés. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And again, this technology at this level, it did not exist just a few weeks ago, you know. And so, so now let me take it back again. You know, we talked about, you know, the runway tools, um, but I want to bring it back to our Lewis Latimer documentary. And again, you can visit, see the Lewis Latimer documentary at lewislatimer.com. That's lewislatimer.com. And there you can also see, you know, the VR and the games and the other things that we've created. So I'm going to break down exactly how we created the Lewis Latimer documentary. That's been one of the biggest questions that we've had over these weeks. And we were hesitant to, to give all the details because everything was been so dynamic. But also, we wanted to save this for the people who made it this far. Before we gave away some of these secret sauces that have taken us years to evaluate and determine, we wanted to make sure that you were committed. So not only are we going to break down exactly how we made the Lewis Latimer doc, the tools that we use, but for those folks who are in the course, we're going to give you the assets. You're going to be able to get the Adobe project file. You're going to be able to see some of the raw footage and raw images so you can experiment with your own projects and try to recreate some of what we've done. So again, if you haven't seen it yet, you can visit it, lewisladimir.com. It's a nine minute documentary. And so here's how it happened. You know, year, for years, I've wanted to do a documentary on Lewis Latimer. In fact, Shatar and I circulated a proposal probably about seven or eight years ago, called OG, Original Geeks. The, the primary purpose was to focus on African-Americans in art, science, technology, and STEM industries. Louis Latimer was one of those people we wanted to profile. However, at that time, the cost of us generating animations of to such a degree that we did were tens of thousands of dollars. So we kind of filed it away. But as we begin to see some of the opportunities and capabilities of these generative tools, it came out of the idea folder, and this is how we did it. First, I created an outline in Google Docs. This was just a loose free flowing of some of my objectives. The objective was to have a traditional documentary filling piece, but to wrap it around with something that felt like science fiction, Afrofuturism, or whatever you want to call it the idea of people of color using state-of-the-art technology. So I, in the script, I knew I wanted to have these robot characters that I would interact with. One, at the time that I started the project, I wanted to do it with as few other people involved as possible. I wanted to be able to, to test my capabilities of getting as much done as possible on my own. Eventually, I had to bring Shatara in because she's a fantastic editor. We brought our uncle in, Uncle Tyrone, who did the voice for us. But other than that, it was Shatar's voice, my voice, Uncle Tyrone, all the rest are computer-generated voices. So in this initial outline, I outlined the documentary part as a traditional documentary, and then what we call wraparounds. That's an intro at the top and an intro a conclusion at the bottom. So when you watch the documentary, you see I do the animated intro where I'm talking to the robots, like I'm trying to come up with the idea at the top. And then at the end, we come back and the robots and I talk and we finish it out of there. That script idea, and it wasn't a full script. It was an outline that was written in Google Doc. Once I wrote the outline in Google Docs, then we went to ChatGPT and we turned to it to help us write some supplementary material for our script. That was taking, I'm, I'm talking about me just saying roughly what I wanted 
what we needed, and then it helping generate volumes of things. Then we took those pieces and I started pasting them back into the outline that we did in the Google Doc. In some cases, I improved interaction just based on that outline. So then after we have everything outlined in the chat GPT and then in the Google Docs, I also ask the chat GPT to help generate some prompts for us for mid journey. Although most of the prompts were things I had already had in my mind from the earliest days of the documentary. Imagining you, Louis Latimer as a little boy, imagining his family. These were things that had been in my mind as a media creator for a long time. You know, so at that point in time, it was sitting down at Mid Journey, and at that, it was Mid Journey 4. We were so excited because its capabilities and visual output was much better than Mid Journey 3, and it's even greater with Mid Journey 5. So we sat there at Mid Journey, and we just start taking these prompts, going down the outline, following along. First, I created the images for Amaya 100 because I knew I needed my co host to interact with me. Um, I created Lou 2. And that was basically using mid-journey prompts with terms like create an avatar of a robot with an African-American um, for a um, young adult or something. You know, I just use a variety of terms to guide the images where I want it. And keep in mind, as we said before, we use maybe 5% of the images that we generate. So that means we know going in that we have to generate thousands of, or hundreds, dozens of images in order to get those one or two that we want perfectly. So that's what I did. I made the images for the robots. Then I began to make the images for Louis Latimer, the strongest visuals that I had. These are like our cornerstone, you know, images. You know, we knew we needed him as a child. We knew we needed him. We knew we needed, see wifey, thank you for that, for giving me that. She said, your hands are moving too much. It's messing up the virtual. <laughs> thank you. So we knew we needed Louis Latimer as a child. We knew we wanted him in the lab. We knew we needed Edison. You know, and we knew we needed Alexander Graham Bell. So even if we didn't know every visual to go in between, by having these starting points, we would turn back to the chat GPT and re-enhance our script as we needed to. Once I had the Amaya and the Lu2 images created, I headed over to d-id.com. That is d-id.com. This is where we made the magic of turning Amaya 100 and Lu2 and Latimer, the search engine um, avatar, turning them into animated avatars. Within the DID, we're able to upload an image. They have voice options in there so we can paste part of our script. It would marry the voice with the image and animate it to make those beautifully animated images that you see of the narrator talking, of Edison talking, you know, Latimer himself talking. We did a whole series of those through D-ID, but here's an important part, and it's not on our list right here, but we then took the video output from the D-ID and we ran it through the Topaz Labs. Running it through the Topaz Labs allowed us to blow those low resolution video images all the way up to 4K, in some cases, 8K images. So when we cut to Alexander Graham Bell very close on his face, we're able to keep the integrity of our visuals. Because again, the Topaz Labs doesn't only blow it up, but it enhances the visuals as well. So after we made those, we now we had all of our, our narration done. What I had learned from years of documentary filmmaking is if you have the narration and the story flow, then at that point, it's super easy to make the supplemental B-roll visuals that go along with it. So that's what we did. We went back through and made now more visuals. We made background images. We made B-roll. B-roll is the videos that show when we're talking um, and you hear our voice under it. After we had all these images, we had to do something. Uh, for my visual clips, I filmed myself against a green screen background. And again, if you're watching this, um, in the replay, you're going to see visuals over all of this. you know. But yes, I filmed myself in a green screen background. However, technically, it was about four different colors of green because I needed such a big space of me walking on set. So we turned to what then was one of the best background removal tools, Canva. In fact, Canva using AI gave us better removal options than the Adobe Premiere tool that I've been using for 20 years, which has background removal. 
However, it does not have AI powered background removal. So that Canva lifted me up off of that green screen and we were able to put our backgrounds right behind me. Again, generated by the AI. So this set that you're seeing right here was one of 50 or 60 images that I created for the, so I knew I needed a back view like this, but I knew I needed my control panel view as well. So again, using Canva, we were able to marry me with those backgrounds to get nice, clean backgrounds. However, now that exact, if we were doing that exact same process, I would absolutely use Runway ML. Because not only does Runway have the tools that we just demonstrated, but they have dozens of tools that are exceptional for professional video makers and media makers. In fact, the Oscar award winning movie, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, turned to Runway for some of their green screen removal scenes. Okay, so now here we go. We have our backgrounds. We have my visuals. We also needed some supplemental voices. Like I said, outside of Shatar, myself, and Uncle Tyrone, we needed additional voices. So D-ID had some of these voices that we used, but we also knew we wanted some voices that were not in that catalog just for diversity. So we went over to Amazon Polly, and it was there that we created the voice for Latimer, the search engine, and then ran that character and that voice through DID to create the final product. There's just a couple of more things that we use here. For sound effects, we went to freesounds.org and to Canva. Canva, yes, Canva has sound effects. And there's one more listed here that is not listed here, and that's pixabay.com. Pixabay.com. Via Pixabay, Free sounds and Canva, that's how we collected the clicks and the creaks and the beeps and the sounds. All these things that we learned help enhance the animation. We didn't learn that. Walt Disney and all these OG animators learned that when you see something on screen and you add a sound effect to it, it's going to enhance the experience for people. So after we collected all those sound effects, we turned to SoundDraw.io to generate music. SoundDraw.io, we mentioned a few weeks ago is a tool that lets you make original scores and it lets you adjust them for the time frame. And there are too many steps. What does this say? <laughs> what does that say? There are too many steps to this. Yes, there are many steps to this. And as we said at the beginning, only 10% of the folks who started out with us, 119 people, you know, so of that 119 people, yeah, basically about 11 to 19 people, you know, will make it this far. But those who do, you're going to grab this information and hopefully you make something exceptional that inspires us. You know, But again, you can always come in, leave your questions in the discussion forum. You need to owe it to yourself to not expect fast results, but instead the, the results that you want. You know, But let me just finish up. So after we got all these pieces, the sound effects, the music, the little individual avatar pieces, our backgrounds, we went into Adobe Premiere and edited them all together and mastered the program. We output a 4K master file and we had our Lewis Latimer documentary. We then took still images that we had created and we created the game, as we mentioned, and our virtual reality portal, which is a whole nother discussion. You know, so that's the life of Lewis Latimer. And again, if we were doing it different today, you know, we have Runway ML for green screen. We have the video to video generation tools on Runway. So, for example, at the opening of Lewis Latimer, you'll see we took some still images of the exterior of our lab and we used Canva to add slight motion to them. And we also had a little green screen airplane that we had fly over. Some of that exact video sort of stuff we can now generate by typing words. And instead of it returning pictures to us, it's going to return simple animations. So we could use a service like Runway or Kibber or Pictory to help generate additional elements for us. And let's see. So that's pretty much, all right, there we go. What's next? As we wrap up this discussion on AI media making, actually, as we wrap up this iteration of the AI toolbox in our live sessions, Shatar and I have, have come to understand that, yes, we're going to continue to train people on these AI tools. However, this space is becoming so broad that we cannot stay broad. You know, therefore, we are very excited to announce our new email newsletter, the AI Media Makers Report newsletter. 
Its sole purpose is to identify valuable, useful, helpful tools, services, resources, processes, tips, and techniques for those of us who are committed to using AI to make media. Whether we're making videos, whether we're making movies, whether we're making books or games or interactive content. This is differently than the whole world of AI that is developing in biology and biomedical engineering and in DNA and in 3D printing and the self-driving cars. You know, all of these places are being impacted by the AI revolution that is happening. If we, we could spend a whole year just talking about the role of AI and how it's changed the lives of computer programmers. If you're developing a WordPress plugin, you can go to code.wp and that AI is going to help you generate original code for your plugins and things. That alone is a discussion and an initiative and a training program. So when Shatar and I return to our, with our training in the weeks ahead, we're going to delve deeper into a whole new set of lessons and activities focused for the AI media makers. Meanwhile, for those who are getting onboarded for the first time, this course will continue to be updated. We'll continue to add more links, sample files, projects, and content. But most of all, we want to encourage you to experiment. Do you have some reports that you could tell us? Have you learned something about AI and its use in your business? Hit us up in the community, share that information. Or do you think there's a lesson or course or project that we need to share in the AI media in the toolbox or techamedia.io? Again, email us maxi at superlivestreams.com or support at superlivestreams or support at AI toolbox. Dear, before we wrap out this cohort, is there anything did you like to say? Oh, yes. Thank you. OK, look, even though we're wrapping out our live stream sessions, we're going to continue to be available over the next two weeks in advance of and even through our Vegas meetup, because we are continue to be dedicated to everyone and your projects. So we're going to send out an email and we're going to create a space for people to help showcase their projects. But again, we're not expecting it to be done yet. We're hoping that you will go back through this course with a fine tooth comb. Find the pieces that are most relevant to what you need and hit us up with questions. Leave them in the discussion forum there on a specific lesson. Post them in the community or email us directly. But we are determined that by the time that we meet in Las Vegas, we have folks with projects that are ready to show. So don't be worried. Don't be scared. The newsletter, thank you, Anjay, we actually will have the first two. The newsletter is going to come out twice a week. The first two episodes issues will be done this week. We haven't decided which days we're going to send them out. But yes, in, in the weeks leading up to the uh, loss to the NAB, we'll have at least four episodes in the next couple of weeks ahead. They'll be coming out. Yes. So, again, if you have a project that's finished already and you want to send us a link or a draft or something to check out, please do. Or you can go directly to the community forums and post it there and we'll share it with other people as well. Any other questions there? All right. OK, you guys, this is our last wrap up for the AI Toolbox Boot Camp. This has been an amazing journey for us so far these past few weeks. It really made us focus. It really made us work on outreach, connecting with some folks we have not connected with in a very long time. Again, in the 119 people in this program and in our community right now, we have educators, we have deans, we have engineers, we have homemakers. You know, we have all sorts of people who are curious about this technology and are ready to apply it to their life. So we will continue to send out updates in the next couple of weeks and we will do little nudges. We don't want anyone to be discouraged. You can be starting. You may have started with us six weeks ago and you're back on week number one. Do that. That's OK. Because we guarantee that if you work your way through these lessons, you're going to find something that's beneficial to you. With that in mind, we're going to wrap up this session. Shatar and I are going to take a few days vacation. And then we're going to come back and attack this ish with a fervor. So thank you all for participating. We want to see you in our community in the weeks ahead. And hope to see you all here in Las Vegas hiking with us out in Rare Rock. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Shatar. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Dr. Tria. Thank you, Aaron. You know, uh, thank you to everyone who joined us over these weeks and nudged us to make it even better. 
Oh, yes. Sierra. Thank you, Sierra. And who else? Sierra, Jean, Lana. These are all folks who have asked us information, who have held us in, to, accountable for the office hours, and who have helped us be better. So thank you all. All right. Hit us up. If you got if need information, we will see you. Maxi Collier, AI Toolbox Bootcamp. We're out of here. Job bless, job bless, job bless, job bless. Yo, on one baby, born in Calvin from the 303. Suburban background, cul de sac, house was red and green. Frosted flakes, walks to school, where part of his daily routine. Rich or distant. Good morning, OG Max. Your heart rate is elevated. Shall I record a workout? Based on historical data, he is either pacing, puffing, or pondering at this time of the morning. <laughs> yes, I'm just pacing. Um, you know, I. So first of all, you guys, congratulations. Our first video has been received tremendously. We have so many queries and, and questions coming in. Yes, searches for AI Toolbox Bootcamp have risen by 357%. I'm very excited. Run all systems and task checks. 100 all is good OG Max. What is on your mind? Well, what's on my mind is I've been having this idea about trying to do some sort of Black History Month tribute, featuring all of these amazing AI technologies, integrating them to tell some sort of story, and I just can't decide on which story to tell. Perhaps this is a good time for the Dr. Max E.T. Collier Tribute Project? Yes, absolutely, Amaya. I thought about doing a documentary on my dad. Dr. Max E.T. Collier. I am proud to share the legacy of Dr. Max E.T. Collier, psychiatrist, public health administrator, among the first black graduates of Vanderbilt University, the first African-American health commissioner of Baltimore. Born March 30, 1945, sunset April 22, 1994. Shall we begin on this now? No, I need that documentary on my father to, we need more time than what I can do right now. What do you have in mind? Well, there's all sorts of folks who are always getting attention during Black History Month. Harriet Tubman. Frederick Douglass. I want someone that's lesser known. George Washington Carver. Zora, Neil Hurston. Who? Oscar Michaud. Fanny Lou Hamer. How about Louis Latimer? Louis Latimer, born September 4th, 1848 in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Of course. Latimer. Latimer is here. Perfect. Yes. Latimer, let's do a little documentary about your namesake. Louis H. Latimer, inventor and engineer. Yes, Louis H. Latimer. Loading. Meanwhile, Amaya, can you pull up a few points of information on Louis Latimer? Preparing documentary assets now. Wonderful. Okay, Lou too. Meanwhile, you put together a little quiz, a little game, or some interactive activities. On it. All right, so that's our plan. We'll put together a documentary called The Light of Louis Latimer. Huh. Um. No. Okay. Long live Louis Latimer. Maybe. Uh, okay. Louis Latimer, engineer, inventor. Um, wow. perhaps we could try something else. Okay, we'll come up with the title, you guys. But that's the idea. We're going to tell the story of Louis H. Latimer, the namesake for our Latimer search engine. Yes, that would be most appropriate. Louis H. Latimer was a highly skilled inventor and engineer. Louis Latimer was among my most trusted collaborators. Yes, Louis Latimer. I'm Louis Latimer, inventor, engineer, and an all-around creative mind. Allow me to share with you some of the exciting stories of my life and the challenges I faced.
Born in 1848 in Chelsea, Massachusetts, Latimer was the youngest of four children, parents who had escaped slavery in Virginia and sought refuge in Massachusetts. My journey wasn't easy. I faced many challenges, including being born into poverty and facing racial discrimination. But I never let that get me down. I used my education and creativity to rise above it all. Latimer joined the U.S. Navy at the age of 16 and served as a landsman during the Civil War. After his discharge, he began working as an office boy in a patent law firm where he honed his skills in drafting and sketching. He quickly rose through the ranks and became the firm's head draftsman, earning $20 per week. And then there was a time I worked with Alexander Graham Bell. Hey, yo. Bro, can you hear me now? Okay, bet. We were on a mission to bring the world of telecommunications to new heights. Yes, Louis Latimer. LL and I were young men, I was just 29, that day, we rushed to file my patent for the telephone. We had to make haste, cause that Sneak Gray was trying to beat us. But thanks to Liu, we made it. It was a partnership that would change the world forever. He worked alongside Alexander Graham Bell, Hiram Maxim, and Thomas Edison, developing and improving upon electric filament manufacturing techniques. Louis Latimer was among my most trusted collaborators. His genius works helped me create a light bulb that lasted longer than any others before it. I also had the honor of working with Thomas Edison. We worked together on various projects, and he taught me a great deal about the field of electrical engineering. Lewis also helped set up electric lighting systems in cities across the country and around the world. I led a team of engineers to design and build a new system for the street lighting. He received several patents for his inventions. It was the year 1881, and I was defending my patent for an improved electric lamp filament. It was a grueling process, but I was determined to protect my invention, and I succeeded. He was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for his groundbreaking work. I was a lecturer and an activist. I used my platform to educate others about the importance of science and technology, and I fought for the rights of people of color. Latimer passed away in 1928 at the age of 80, leaving behind a legacy of innovation and determination that continues to inspire others to this day. Imagine what it was like for Louis Latimer to help bring lights and electricity to cities for the first time ever. That is a true pioneer, a trailblazer who still impacts our lives decades later. The work that Louis Latimer conducted as an inventor and engineer makes it possible for future engineers like me to explore new worlds in science and technology. Thank you, Mr. Latimer. Thank you, Mr. Lewis Latimer, for overcoming life's challenges and blazing so many trails in science, technology, and social activism. Thank you, my friend. Life has its challenges, but I learned that it's how you respond to them that defines you. Don't let anything stand in your way and never stop chasing your dreams. That's what I did, and it led me to a life filled with excitement and impact. Who knows what you will achieve if you follow in my footsteps? Great work, team. I think we effectively demonstrated some of these tools. Good work, guys. You as well. Go, team. Thank you, Mr. Latimer. Three, two, one, roll credits. A very unique combo. Appreciate and seize the day like there's no tomorrow. Creative at heart, storytelling's a part of my DNA. In my blood to paint clear pictures of the things I say. Come from my family creatives, that makes me an instant native. 
I can be very persuasive but keep to myself, non-invasive. Computer on in my seat, with Haley songs on repeat. Work hard, grind it on my feet, make my own choices. I'm a king. Hey, make my own choices. I'm a king.